Hello everyone and welcome to another traditional draft of Neon Dynasty. And uh, okay, uh, the pack has Mythic Rare, which is not really a limited playable card unless your deck is really interesting. Well, I guess I could make it work, but um, uh, I'm going to take it because I'm uh, uh, during the first couple of dozen drafts I will. Uh, com uh, collect cards to complete the set fully and I don't have to redraft regular race but I do have to redraft mythic race which most of you <laughs> know already if you have been seeing my drafts but just in case someone new is coming to uh, see this draft uh, the reason I'm picking here it's because it's a mythic rare and it makes it faster to complete the set if this rare was something not as good I think I would take the Heiko Yamazaki here uh, this is a, a fairly weak pack there's no high quality commons that I really would be happy to first pick. I think the Heiko Yamazaki is quite good because you can just, you know, get some free cards out of that. And uh, this time I just take the the Kami War here. Uh, it is low chance, but there is like a very very small chance that I could actually play that card in the deck. But it is a really hefty <laughs> mana requirement there. Now this March of Burgeoning Life is. It's just unplayable in limited, as you can see from the text. It's not really easy to utilize it. You need some duplicates in the deck, or your opponent has to have same name card as you have, and even then you have to pay extra mana for getting a creature at instant, instant speed from your deck. So it's not really a card you are going to pick or play. Uh, this pack is super weak, though. Okay, there is a lethal exploit. I was really wor worried. I was actually thinking about the Bamboo Grow Argent and maybe try to go some kind of five color green deck here. Although this uh, careful cultivation is actually good too. I mean, not in the five color green deck, but it's actually the better two mana green card because usually you will have the channel option here. But now I'll take the quite decent removal spell here instead. And yeah, this Kami War is not exactly going to, going to go to the deck. As a default, I'm going to try to <laughs> draft a normal two-color deck. All right, Invoke Calamity is uh, not not maybe maybe one of the weaker of this Invoke uh, cycle of cards. And of course, the double, not double, quadruple uh, uh, color requirement is a heft, very hefty requirement as well. Not exactly the kind of card you want to be picking unless you are willing to draft almost monocolor. Now. Uh, I don't think the black cards in this pack are really that great. Uh, I will take something else than black here. I'm thinking about the Generous Visitor because this is really good if you you know can draft around these enchantments and it's worth picking this pay of cards early in the draft because if you get there this is going to be one of the strongest cards in the deck. Tales of Master Seshiro is also a decent green card here but um, I'll take this thing which is going to be potentially incredibly strong card. And now, um, it's pretty easy, I think, here. I do like the Spirited Companion, and Green White is better for the enchantment, uh, you know, deck. But then again, I already have a black card, and there's a very good, high-quality black uh, enchantment drop here, too. So I think I will take the Okiba Reckoner right here instead. Um, yeah, and I'm looking to... Currently looking to be a black green a deck with enchantment focus, but let's see if that if that's going to happen. Now there is a the long reach of night, also an enchantment and quite good card. There's also the harmonious emergence, which I like quite a bit, also an enchantment. Um, but this thing is really decent. Now this is I think bugged in the arena that it forces the discard if they don't have a creature. Now that's not a problem for me. I don't like to kind of abuse cards, but this is the strongest pack. A card in the pack I think for what I have picked here so, so far so I'll take it now uh, but um, I guess the opponent can file a refund if they if I am going to play this I, I try to not abuse it but sometimes I have to play this even when they don't have a creature because I just want the creature part to happen at some point so I will play as though this you know card is working as intended uh, but yeah it is the best option for me uh, malicious malfunction. This is a sideboard card, but this is a traditional draft, so I could pick that one. There's also a you are already dead here, but there's also the harmonious emergence. This is actually quite interesting because I have four cards here um, in my deck portion here now, and uh, two of them are enchantments. 
And I could take the third one right now. I think I'll take the emergence because uh, I took the Generos Visitor here. Yeah, this is a good sideboard card. That's definitely is true, but uh, this could be just a very decent main deck card. You are already dead is a card I'm usually willing to play as one of. I'm not really uh, valuing it that high here. I'll take the enchantment here and hoping to get some other uh, green enchantment synergy here. Now there is a better of memory. There's a, there's a two drop which I like more than the, than the three drop, but um, now I have currently only one enchantment payoff. That's not a lot, of course, but then again, it's quite early in the draft. Um, I think that I'll take the enchantment now, but I have to just pick some two drops at some point anyway. But this time I'll just take the enchantment, try to draft around the like Generous Visitor here a bit. Alright, so this gets a Shrine or an Aura. I don't think I have either one of those. I have one Aura. Uh, it's the... Oh yeah, it's of course this Harmonious Emergence. Mm, okay, I guess I could consider picking this card. And yeah, I have ignored the Kami War. I'm not gonna take something like a Network Terminal. Because it would add any color and it would allow me to maybe play this. But I, can, I think I'll just take the Historian's Wisdom. I quite like it. Uh, you can get plus two, plus one and a card. Also, it is an enchantment for the Generous Visitor. It's not that hard to get the card out of it because um, plus two, plus one is going to be counted for the... I mean, you are targeting a creature that's going to get the buff and then it will count for the for the bonus. Alright, so here, Kami of Terrible Secrets. Um, I have already five enchantments but no artifacts. Of course, this requires both. Now, am I going to go that route? Or am I going to take like a runaway trash bot? Because this also counts enchantments. If I'm going to have a bunch of them, this could be interesting. Um, I think this early I'll take the trash bot because I'm not convinced the Kami of ter Terrible Secrets is that easily going to make the cut. I really need both artifacts and the enchantments and there's, no, there's not too many of them available in black and green. I would have to be relying mostly on the colorless cards uh, which are artifacts. Um, yeah, The bronze cards is really not <laughs> not good. Then again I don't like this thing too. Uh, I mean this thing, this thing either. Uh, could take the playable white card even, but uh, it's not even that good. I guess I'll take the energy blade. I'm not planning on playing that card, but um, maybe from sideboard. Hard to say. I'll take here. Um, uh, if I would be going to green white, I don't think that's that likely. I'll take the glowing torment. It's it's something you could consider playing, I, or at least have as a sideboard option. Yeah, I can take the Yukai Trainee right now. That's actually fine to get so late. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, the Cudgels is really still bad. <laughs> uh, I'll take another Trainee here. Fine. I'm not that happy about the pack one. It seems like I didn't get too many strong cards. But um, who knows, that might change, change still. Uh, this pack has... Okay, it has in interesting options here, including a land I wouldn't mind having in the deck, but it's not the pick here. The Goshintai of Hidden Cruelty is usually... Uh, the, the Black Shrine is... Uh, the, the, the two easily main deck couple and actually good ones, just alone, are the black, uh, sorry, the green and red ones. The white is like okay-ish. Blue is very, you know, unexciting. The milling and Shrine with zero power. This is... Something that is at least a four mana two to death. That so I wouldn't maybe mind having it, but I think I'll take the lethal exploit still uh, here and uh, because it, well it's it's minus two minus two quite often, but it can be minus three minus three and getting getting that uh, debuff for, for only two mana is still quite good. I'll take I'll take it here. Um, okay, Kappa Tech Frigger is <laughs> it has to be the pick. That's incredibly strong card. Yeah, that's very easy pick here. There's nothing that comes to close here. Yep. Yeah, basically just a two mana one three death toucher is already quite good, and then you know it has the pretty relevant ability, and I'm not talking even about ninjutsu, but you can just you know kill some nasty artifacts or enchantments, which there's no shortage of in this set, and of course it does have the ninjutsu too. So as long as you have this in hand, you just need to you know. Get some attacker that's unblocked, and then you get to get some very nice value out of that thing. Now here I can, I could take the Calling Stalker too, or, or fade into Antiquity, but I just like the Jukai Preserver quite a lot. Now I have only one card that actually cares about the enchantments, uh, but this is just such a good card. Even I mean, it's it's 
has so many it has relevant stats relevant channel ability and a relevant card type so it's really yeah i, I just want to take it i think it is one of the better green commons and here uh, i could take the scrounger but um I, it's most likely if i would actually get those you control enchantment and artifact payoffs because this is an artifact i think i'm not going to go that route i don't have any of these four drop i, I did pass the one four drop that actually would draw your a card if you control both but i think i'll, I'll talk i i like the jukai trainee here now it's quite good to drop both offense and defense it's you know blocking it requires something that can you know brawl with a 3-3 and of course i can still block with this thing as it was a 3-3 um yeah unforgiving one is interesting but i'm just taking the reckoner raid right here that's such a nice one drop mukota ambusher is like um okay but uh it's not as good as the reckoner raid right? at least uh for what i have picked here now And here we get another Historian's Wisdom, which is which is a card I wouldn't maybe mind having, but I really value these dual lands that you know tap for both of my colors. Um, I think I can leave without a second copy of a Historian's Wisdom, but I really like the Jungle Hollow here. I think it's a rather easy pick here, in fact. And here we have a Fang of Sigeki, we have a Kaitas Pursuit. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm really not interested in playing multiple of these clothing torments. So this is really neat. And this is also a very decent quality one drop. Death Touch with a relevant card type. Uh, which really decent actually. Okay, I get now another Yukai Preserver. Yeah, this is not the strongest of the March cycle, but it's it's a playable card. But of course it's not something I would be splashing death to the Kami. It is a little bit better peak in best of three where you can use it as a sideboard card, but now I'll just take the very high quality four drop common here. And uh, there's a boon of Poseidon. I actually like it quite a bit. Um, I don't have any five mana cards or expensive ones, but this is still gonna be um, plus three, plus three, plus four, plus four, often enough. The centipede is also something you could consider actually. Um, I like the trick still here a little bit more. Okay, there, now there is a Kami of Terrible Secrets, but I also have some former cards already. I'm not even sure if I care about this now. Oh my god, the enchantment count is of course very high at 10, but only two artifacts, so it's not gonna be that easy to get, gain the, you know, draw the card there. Brute Suit though. I mean, I'm not you select this war, what's my pick, but it could even be the Increase Infiltrator, but I don't really like that card unless I have, you know, multiple ninjas, which I don't. Okay, I got the Colin Stalker here though, That's I'm, I'm happy to pick it. It seems like green is quite open. Uh, Black certainly wasn't in this pack too, at least. Uh, Dramatist's Puppet. Uh, I don't care, I'll just take something here. Um, unforgiving one. Yeah, I don't know if that's gonna be good enough. I don't necessarily... Oh, this is... I got the Historian's Wisdom so late. <laughs> nice. Uh, but I, I mean, I, I won't necessarily have that many modified creatures that, that this would be interesting, but I guess uh, the draft is not over yet. Um, well, this pack has interesting options for sure. Um, I don't think the Azusa's main, many journeys is that great. Um, you get a 3-3 three, three in the end by only paying 2, two mana and... Uh, gain three life and uh, well sometimes you can even accelerate your um, land mana, mana a bit but I don't really know if that that's interesting what I'm thinking about here is just the greater Tanuki I could take some a big hitter now the master's rebuke is, is good too though um, but I think I'll take the big hitter now I just like it quite a bit and I have nothing really in the very late game all right so I think I'm gonna take the assassin's ink here this is quite often going to be a 3 mana card in this deck. And instant speed, even if it is 4 mana, uh, instant speed, 4 mana, destroy target, creature spell is really good. This is just um, not very good, in fact. Uh, I wouldn't even play in this deck. Uh, Life of Toshiro Mezawa, really good, of course. Uh, but it's just not going to be as 
reliable removal as this thing. Now this is not necessarily even removal. It, it has, of course, the Umezawa's cheat uh, modes here in the chapters one and two are really. I mean, you, there's going to be a useful mode. If nothing else, you, you gain four life out of those two chapters, and then have this two three. But um, I'll, I'll take the straight up removal spell here now. I'm sad to pass the uh, the Umezawa's card, but uh, I can only pick one card per pack. Alright, so now there's another option for a Mukatai Ambusher. Uh, Shrine Steward is also here, but did I get any more auras now? I guess I have like two. No, I have four. Oh, because I also have two of these Historians' Wisdoms. I'm not sure if I'm, if I'm playing the Cloving Torment in the main deck though. So this is not necessarily... Um, this thing is not necessarily something I would be that interested in. Um, now the question is, am I taking like the Chain Flail Centipede or G still just a two drop? I don't think I really care about modified creatures that much, but you get some counters from this. I guess I'll take the two drop here, but it could be the uh, chain flail centipede. Oh wow, this is great. I'll take the kappa tech fragger, obviously. Um, I don't even need the careful cultivation because even though it is a nice two mana, you know, mana producing one one, but uh, my deck doesn't have that high of a mana curve. I don't need the mana producing that much. This is just high quality card, no matter what. So I'm very very happy to take it here. Um, malicious malfunction. I could again pick it for the sideboard, but it also does, you know, kill a bunch of my creatures. So probably not not for this deck. Season of renewal is pr pretty interesting, but I do like the Tamiya's safekeeping as well. Um, but I have uh, so many enchantments that I easily can get this, you know, two cards from this thing always. Safekeeping is pretty nice little trick, but I think I will try the season of renewal because this deck is the one that can actually benefit from it quite a bit. Okay, I could take another um, another one of these um, that uh, mana fixing cards. I could take a fade into antiquity though. I think I could play the Gucci Shadow Walker in this deck as well, but that's probably not the pick. Uh, I have uh, so many cards to make though that I'm not even sure if I care about this fade into antiquity. I could just take the Haven here because it, it's mana fixing. I have some double casters here, and I like most of the cards I have picked now. So I'm, I'm gonna take this just because the land um, it doesn't actually take a spell slot from the deck. So um, yeah, that's the that's the reasoning there. Um, I could again take a scrounger. So this returns ninjas and rogues. The the second mode is not really worth paying you know five mana for a three three uh, ninjas and rogues. So that is. Five ninjas, no rogues. Uh, I don't think I like it that much. I don't like anything here. I think I'll maybe take the favor of Yukai here, but probably not going to take it. Well, this is an easy pack. I would actually like to have the Mukota Ambusher, but there's no way I'm gonna pass up a Gloom Streaker. Yeah, that's an easy pick here. This is such a nice, nice two mana card. And there's an Azusa's Many Journeys again. There's also a Better of Memory. Now, I have one enchantment payoff, basically. I guess the Season of Renewal is one too, but uh, only the Generous Visitor really cares about enchantments. So I'm, I don't think I need this. Also, this is an enchantment, but I think I will actually take the You Are Already Dead. I like to play one of these, and I, I have a little bit of a shortage from Interaction Spell, actually. So this, this allows me to you know kill something actually big. I have a lethal exploit which kills something small. Now I do have the Assassin's Ink too for big big creatures but uh, but that's what I took. And yeah I'm not taking another one. I will maybe take the Centipede. I like it quite a bit. It's of course quite an offensive card but my deck is quite offensive with all these two drops. Okay as Ryan Stewart came back now uh, uh, this is just not the card I'm willing to play. I guess you could try to put it in against bombs but uh, Three mana for either of those effects is just <laughs> at sorcery speed, especially not so good. I take the shrine steward. I might play it if I have enough, you know, things to fetch in the final build. Uh, here, none of that matters, I think. I got the sh shakedown now if I want to sideboard it in, and there's another unforgiving one. So I want to get the last big dragon spark reactor. It's a really good build around, but of course, if you don't draft the archetype, uh, archetype uh, revolving around the artifact, it's, it's basically an unplayable card. Okay, so this is there's not a lot of cards in my sideboard here, so I'll just uh, go and go to this mode here, and uh, I will need to make some easy cuts first. I think the Clawing Torment might be an easy cut. I said I'm an 
aggressive deck, but maybe it's not quite the main, main deck card. It's also quite bad against any deck that has ninjas, uh, because then it, they can just attack and return the creature when I don't block it. Of course I can still block it, but you know, you get the idea. Uh, this is still a fine sideboard card against decks that have multiple one toughness creatures because it, it of course gets rid of them by only paying you know one mana. Then uh, Fang of yeah I like the, all the one drops here now. Then Boon of Poseidon. I guess that's kind of a thing I could cut. I have now seven two drops. Mm, one Yukai Trini could be maybe cut, but mm, I would also like to use the. Uh, enormous energy blade just to you know test the card. I don't think it's that good and I think I will put it on the sideboard I, I maybe sideboard it in if I for some reason need to push through creatures that have a, a lot of toughness So maybe I can sideboard it in because uh, the energy blade on something like a Yukai trainee is not maybe that bad Because at some point this thing cannot attack opponent will have opponent will have four toughness creatures uh, Well depending on the deck of course they're playing but yeah, it's, it's better to be left on the sideboard. And the unforgiving one, it is a 3 mana 2-3 menace. I also have some number of ninjas which will benefit from this thing. Uh, but maybe not that many in the end. I have 5 ninjas, but not all ninjas have a ninja too, so should I... <laughs> I mean, I got 2 of these which do have a ninja too, 2 of these which do have a ninja too, and then something, some other ninja. Which I don't remember right now. I guess I could just. Uh... Ah, is one of these? Yeah, this is a ninja, which doesn't have a ninja. All right, so these are my five ninjas. I don't think that's enough for me to play a two, three minutes. I don't need to get this through. I mean, it's nice to get the tech record through, but maybe my deck can push through with the, something like a Yukai trainee. Uh, quite often, because this is not so easy to block. Opponent doesn't want to use their four mana three toughness creature to block my two two power creature, especially when they think they can just take you know two damage uh, when they don't block it. All right, but I think I'll cut both of those. And then historian's wisdom, season of renewal, brute suit. I don't need that transport. Transport. I have. Well, I'm gonna cut some cards. It might have a, like a decent stat line, but I, I think I won't be starting with that card in my main deck. But I also don't want to cut too many creatures here. A favor of Yukai, that's that's something I don't need. This is this is usually a five drop. But you can play it on turn four. Basically it's a four mana four four sorry, four mana four five uh, that enters tapped in that case. And I would often play it. The fact this thing has vigilance is, you know, that's the good part of the card. You can attack with it and still leave it as a blocker or maybe even tap the land for mana if you need to. Uh, so I will like to play that card and uh, the other four mana cards. Yeah, I definitely want to play all the four mana cards here. The shrine steward is a question mark still, so it cares about shrines and auras. I didn't get any shrines. Currently, I'm only at three auras, which I could, you know, draw. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna play two of these historians wisdoms either. So I will cut the steward, and maybe I will cut one of these wisdoms in, from, from the main deck. I like to use one in the main deck and then I can sideboard into two if opponent has like a low power creatures when I can almost guarantee uh, that the card draw uh, from this thing yeah that's my that's my reasoning there and then I do have to you know still cut something uh, I kind of like that you are already dead it can you know deal with some annoying thing if if it gets dealt damage I don't have any burn burn stuff here though yeah, it's kind of tough. I don't even have the, f uh, the, what's the, the two mana green instant that makes your creature deal damage equal to its power to target creature. Don't recall its name right now, but um, it's also something you can combine with the you are already dead. Yes, you do use two cards, but this thing draws a card, so it's still a favor, uh, uh, something you don't mind doing if you need to get rid of something very, very big. Uh, so I guess I could see cutting it from the main deck again as use it as a sideboard option when I know that there will be some high toughness creatures I maybe need to push through somehow or something that I need to just you know jump block and then kill afterwards. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm willing to cut it now actually. I, I know I said I like to play one of them in the main deck, but um, but that, that doesn't mean I have to do that. 15 creatures, 10 non-creatures. Am I going to play 17 or 16 lands? 
I think it's safer to play 17 here. I'm not exactly sure though. I have a pretty low curve here. I do have a pretty low curve. Well, I need to cut one card no matter what. And I think the one card is a new guy training. I don't need to maybe play that many of them. And then there's the Boon of Poseidon, which is actually not going to be that amazing in this deck because uh, most of my creatures are two, or most of, most of my permanents are two and three mana. I have some at four, one at six, and this is also a four mana permanent. So yeah, it's sometimes it can be a plus four, plus four. Sometimes it's just a plus three, plus three, which is still acceptable, it is. Sometimes it is plus two, plus two, which is, you know, not what you want to be doing at, at two mana, but it's not totally useless. So I could cut that one. Okay, I will sideboard it in if I feel like I a, a trick, combat trick is something that would be uh, an interesting card to have in a particular matchup. So yeah, this is really only eight black cards, but uh, green was definitely more open in the draft than black. Uh, still the black cards I have, they are pretty good stuff, so... Uh, I still have to play a lot of black sources because I have this one mana card and then there's a double caster. Um, so yeah, I do need to play, but I have two mana fixing things, so that's maybe okay. But I can still make some change. Maybe I want to play the you are already dead in the main deck, uh, but do I? I want to play the season of renewal. I want to play the history and wisdom at one copy. And I want to play these two mana creatures here too. And the one mana creatures. So the final enchantment count is 11, so that's uh, almost half the spells in the deck are enchantments. So the generous visitor will will be, you know, giving me a nice amount of counters. I also don't think I did cut that many enchantments. I cut like the glowing torment, which I think is not that strong, and then I cut a, one of the history and wisdoms and the a favor of Yukai. So uh, I think those cuts are still quite reasonable. Uh, I don't think I wanna cut something like a chain of flail centipede. I like the offensive uh, power of this card, but it's also something I can easily sideboard in matchups that feature opponent having an aggressive deck, then I don't want to play a 3 mana 2-2 two, two that basically does something only when it attacks. But I like to uh, start with this card in the main deck, because I can curve out pretty aggressively myself, and then the plus 2 plus 0 oh, for, for an attacker is quite useful in fact. So this is the deck, let's just put the lands here, couple of mana fixing lands, and yep, I, because of the, all these, I have two tapped lands, so that means my one drops won't necessarily always be entering the battlefield on turn one, but I like the, still that I have the, you know, a little bit more reliable mana base in the deck. Now the actual question is, how many swamps do I need to play? This double caster is going to be good later in the game, but I do want to be able to play the Okiba Reckoner Rage, in the, at least in the first couple of turns if I happen to draw them early. So these are two lands that can produce me black mana. So some number of swamps is... Uh, I mean, what is the correct number of swamps? I will play at least... If I would play six, that would be eight for black. I don't mind if, you know, if I have to play this on turn two, it's acceptable. And then if I would have nine forests with these things, it would be like 11, 11 green sources and uh, eight for black. I think that's that's about right. Let's do that. Because most of the cards are really green. I have doubled the amount of green cards, although this is both. But yeah, this is the main deck. Okay, on the play, and um, yep, I'll, I'll do this because I can play the jungle hollow on turn one and then turn two, play the fang and the uh, reconnoitre raid, and then I can quite easily maybe need to do this thing out. Because this will have many, and this is just a death touch. One, one. Although I could also now play the 
trainee, but I actually don't like it that much. Except that if I do draw a land, okay, fine. Actually, I do this. So this one is a planes. Yeah, it has the icon there. Uh, if I draw a land, then I can actually have a better. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, even if I don't. Okay, it's tough to say now. Hey, I can just kill this thing. Then I can ninja too. Okay, this is great. They can't block it because it has, you know, the Bushido ability. And then I can just... Um, this is an enchantment creature. So yeah, let's let's do this. <laughs> Value. This is such a good one, this tech breaker. Now, I didn't draw the land, but I'm happy. <laughs> happy to, you know, get the free kill here. And the 1-3 is still a good blocker. And I have the option to, you know, return it back with this thing. Okay, so now... Mm -mm -mm. They will block because it's a lifelinker, so I would have to be willing to use the lethal exploit on this turn. Then I can play the Fang of Shigeki. Yeah. It makes sense. And of course if they do not block, uh, the Calling Stalker is gonna make them yeah, regret the decision here too. Because now I get this thing back. And uh, <laughs> I can use the you know the death touch ability again here. I mean, it will have death touch, and then if it connects, I can use the, the ability to remove the counter to to you know again exile some artifact or an enchantment. Are they mono white? Okay, spirited companion. Oh, that's a good one on the Fang of Shigeki. So this is now at least not going to attack. This is going to be a two-two first striker. Okay. Although if the calling stalker connects, uh, I can give a counter to the Fang here. Yeah, I can just... I do have also now a modified creature here. So this will be minus three, minus three. I could just kill the disciple get the, and then attack with this. They will either jump block or take the take the three here. And then, of course, this will get a counter. Uh, then I can play the trainee. Also, they, they do know about the uh, the Kappa Tech Fragger. So, I mean, I could exile the en Enlighten Era of Enlightenment here, so... Let's do this and see how they decide to do. I'm not sure I'm going to use the ninja necessarily, if they take it. I do like the counter on this this thing, uh, but this first strike will be somewhat annoying. Oh, they conceded it. What? Did they really... Were they so annoyed at the fact that I can exile this era of enlightenment? I wasn't even sure if I'm going to do that, because let's say I connect for three, this gets a counter. I play the Yukai Trainee and this, thing, this can later. I'm not even sure if I would have done that, but hey, that's fine. So I saw a lot of white enchantments there. Uh, is there something like a... I guess the Cloving Torment will get rid of this Iganjo Exemplar. Do I want to have it? Do I want to have the boon of Poseidon? Because now that they saw the ninjas, they are willing to block and the pump, pump spell will be a little bit better in that case. But of course I need to figure out if there's something I want to... Uh, I want to, you know, take away from the deck. Uh, against one of white, the history and wisdom should be drawing me a card quite easily. The bearer of memory might actually be a bit in uninteresting uh, against the deck that, you know, this can just trade with their two drops and... Uh, they might be a bit more aggressive than me, plus the 2-2 first striker is uh, annoying against this. Now this of course at 6 mana does things, but that's um, that's a lot of mana. So I think I will cut the better of memory against that tech, and I will play the Boon of Poseidon here. Now my enchantment count went to down to 10, but this is still gonna be good enough. Uh, the Clothing Torment is... it is interesting, but... Hmm... Not sure, really. I, I don't feel like I need it. Maybe the Fang of Shigeki is not so great against against you know the 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 card drawing thing. So if I cut, well, this is also an enchantment, so fine. I will actually cut the Fang of Shigeki. I put the Cloving Torment because there's some creatures I can just kill kill with it. Okay, that is the sideboarding. I'm not totally sure if that was. Such a great idea, but 
maybe it was. They could have more of those two ones, for for instance. Okay, well, this is <laughs> six lander. Let's mulligan. Six lander into one lander. Classic. That said, I have. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, this is this gives me both mana. I'm keeping it. Uh, and the least useful card here is gonna be the chain player centipede. Also, something I actually could have cut against that deck. I didn't even realize that, but it's something I maybe should have cut. Well, if it goes to game three. But yeah, with this, I mean, if I draw any land, I can play all my two drops, which I have four of in here. And this is also a high quality card when I draw the third land. So this is worth, you know, the risk here. And definitely, uh, maybe I would have, you know, Mulligan this hand if this was a seven card hand, but it was six. I didn't want to go to five. Didn't want to go five here, but of course, this could just be a game over very soon. Okay, they do have a white also in the deck. No ninjas, at least now. Yep. Sorry, not white. I mean, um, also blue. <laughs> I knew they had. I knew they had a uh, white there. Yeah, I'm taking here four now. Although, no, no, it's taking only. This is a fox monk, so this doesn't get the pump effect from the exemplars. I guess they're gonna attack with the ex exemplar alone. We're dealing three. I don't think they care about the lifelink. Because if they attack with both of those, I get to trade with the 2-1. But they do care about the life more than the extra damage. I think at this point they would rather deal 3 to me than deal 2 and gain 2 life. But it's their decision, of course. Okay, so I drew 4 cards. None of them was the land. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit hard now. Um, mm -mm, long Reach of Night. Season of Renewal is probably the card I won't have time to use. But yeah, this is now... Uh, I took a risk when I kept the 6 card hand with one land, but I think the keep was totally justified. Going to 5 is always, always going to be a really, you know, really big setback anyway. They really didn't attack. I mean, they should have attacked with everything. They could have dealt 5 to me instead of only 3 here. They don't even care if I would block the Spirited Companion here, because this is gonna net me some nice counters. Not yet though, I don't. my two drops are not... I have five of, five of them, they are not enchantments. Alright, so let's do the one that can block as a 3-3 three, three here. Also I have a couple of these tech wreckers. Now I have a good defense actually, because the Yukai train is blocked as they were 3-3s. Three and I can train here, uh, trade here. Because I have more of that stuff coming up. And uh, they still are, I mean, I'm at 13 here, missing so many times that second land drop. Well, now there's a Tameshi, which I do need to kill, which I sadly cannot do right now. Um, yeah, they get to... Oh, yeah, that's that's bad. That's bad, I needed to removal on that thing. Mm -mm -mm. Well, that's a shame. I kind of want to play the <laughs> three mana card instead of yet another two mana card, but I guess I could also play a two mana card here, because even if I draw a land on the next turn, I can still play you know two two mana cards here. But yeah, the other yeah, the fact they have Tameshi here is that is bad. This goes straight to the battlefield. Yep. Ugh. It works both on artifacts and enchantments, and they of course have these enchantments there. Decoy draws them a card when it leaves the battlefield for whatever reason. Yeah, it is not going to be easy when they have the Tameshi going on. I need to draw my removal very soon on the Tameshi. I have some removal that will be able to deal with it, so maybe I can still... I mean, if I'm going to survive and actually win this game, that would be pretty amazing given how the early, early game went here. Alright, so now I will play this on black. My double black Double caster black spell will now be useful and I can return that. Not that you kite train and this gives a counter to maybe not on it. It will keep a counter on this trainee. And I will take that one back. Uh, this is still very horrible. They can just, if nothing else, they can start attacking with the spirited company and replaying it for card draws. And if they do that, I'm not going to block it. I need to kill Tameshi first. Okay, now they found a, now they found a, an Axel. You know, they have some kind of tricks now, so they can justify this attack with everything. Um, 
I'm pretty sure that Tameshi will survive here, but I have to try to kill it. So I'll block there. This has first strike. Uh, this can block. Well, I guess I can. No, there's not that great trades here. They will draw a card from this thing. I mean, I, I know I die when they can save the Tameshi. I mean, I don't die, but uh, they will. The, the value they're gonna get from it, it's just gonna be too much. But I guess I have to do like that. I would like to keep around the Generous Visitor. This is 2, 4, 6, 7 damage. I go to 6. Uh, that, that maybe makes sense. Okay. Oh, they actually don't have anything. Well, they might have something post-combat. This is actually surprising. Didn't expect that to be how the game goes. Uh... I thought they were able to save, save the Thomas. Oh, they haven't invoked justice. Alright. <laughs> now, that maybe means I have lost the game. They get to distribute four counters. However, they choose. And of course, Thomas is back and uh, don't have the removal for it. So I can play the long reach of night. I'll give a counter on the trainee which so that they can block the hand of enlightenment. This has to be... Oh no, I need my uh, uh, I need my death touchers now actually. But these are not enchantments. This has first track. I need one counter on the trainee, but I don't have a two mana enchantment. Oh yeah, that's the problem. And they still have the Tameshi here. I think it's time to, you know, understand that there's no no. Uh, there's no good play I can make this turn. I can play the enchantment to make this into a 4-4 so that it can be a 5-5 to block the Hand of Enlightenment. And uh, then I just have to, you know, jump block a Golden Tail Disciple with the Generous Visitor. They sacrifice like a, you know, they can sacrifice the Spirited Companion or maybe they just discard a card. Although they would sacrifice this and then use Thomas's ability to get it back and draw a card. And yeah, that wasn't gonna work. Now... The invoke thing, well that's just annoying. I don't know if there's much I can do about it. Uh, sideboard in a Reckoner Shakedown. <sighs> that's really suspect. Um, do I need the pump spell to quickly win them? Okay, Chain Flail. I will cut the Chain Flail Centipede and maybe play another Yukai Train. This actually seems like quite a good card against them. Yeah, I'll do that, but I'm not sure if I should do something else. That's just the plus three, plus three. Historian's Wisdom is... No, I have not that many creature cards. Now, this is a creature which doesn't show in this count. Uh, Cloving Torment. The count block. Now, I guess I'll play it. I'll, I'll, I'll play it with this build. But um, I now, of course, need to have a better starting hand than in the previous one. Although the starting hand was fine if I just drew the second land, like, in two draw steps. Okay, that is... I got my heavier hitters now, which is not so bad. And the opponent's time is to now to mulligan here. I can play the tech Fragger on turn 2, if nothing else comes up. And I can play this on turn 4, no big deal. Okay, well, there is... something came up. Same, same copy. Uh, this is kind of annoying if they have a... You know, any kind of an enchantment. For, for example, Era of Enlightenment. What can they do? Just, um... Uh, they can't even play it now. And if they have a 2-1 enchantment creature, they can't really play that one either. They can play that one. And, um... Do I want to exile this? Because it's quite interesting to... No, I don't want to exile it. I will just... Uh, yeah, they shouldn't block it. Deal the damage here, decline this. I want to keep it as a death toucher. And then I don't necessarily want to show them the other tech fracker. But then again, I don't want to play this. Because this just, you know, trades with the 1-1. Now that I chose not to... I guess that was one reason to do it, but whatever. I, I think this was still fine. I'm going to play the other tech fracker just like that.
Okay, tell me she. Uh, yeah, I. They can. I mean, returning a land this early in the game is also, uh, of course, not uh, not so great. So I don't mind if they block with the spirited companion here now. But now I wish I did exile it because oh, they now I will definitely because this exiles, so they don't have this in the graveyard anymore. Um, I will play just the harmonious harmonious emergence. I don't do the curling stalker thing right now. So let's go that route here, and this one guy will. Exile the spirited companion here, and I will have a 4-5. Oh, I will enchant a, uh, I guess a swamp. They could have a pacifism effect. That would be horrible, actually. Yeah, that, that's the that's the worst thing that can happen. But I think that says mono abilities can be used, unless I... I think it, it allows mana abilities. Okay, now they have a... Now they have an era of enlightenment, which they could have maybe have at on turn two, but two, but they couldn't play it. Now they need to have something on the tech fracker number two, of course. Also, I have a four five vigilance guy here, and they don't know it, but I can use the calling stalker to ideally, uh, you know, return the other tech fracker back to my hand that doesn't uh, no longer have the death touch counter. But I guess they can easily just block that thing too. Doesn't prevent me from attacking with it because it's not like it can trade with it in combat. So they have two mana available, just an Aganjo exemplar, not a big deal actually. Oh, lethal exploit, which is I mean I have a modified I have a two modified creatures, so this is gonna be a minus four minus four. Which means that this thing is quite they don't even have a block available now. And this has Vigilance, that's the great part of this. So definitely first I will just get rid of this so it doesn't even have the option to block. And then I will attack with everything. And this can tap for mana in the end. So I can use the Ninjutsu here. There's no really good block for them. And I can use the Curling Stalker and return this Tech Fracker back. And I will be able to exile the Era of Enlightenment. And they are not going to, you know... They are not going to play this game. Yeah, this Kappa tech fracker, especially against decks, you know, this was an enchantment based deck. It's just uh, such a such a um, crazy good card. And I drew the both of them here. Um, one thing I actually didn't, uh, uh, I will quickly uh, check the deck because I, but I didn't really pay attention to how good my black removal is that cares about my modified creatures because in fact I have a lot of ways to get modified creatures. Uh, Generous Visitor easily can even make me have multiple of them. And then the Calling Stalkers can make me uh, modified creatures. These are modified by when they enter the battlefield. Um, this can make a modified creature. This, well, later on, this can make a modified creature. And uh, this creates a modified creature. These can use a channel ability and all, all the or the ETB to create a modified creature. So actually, this can easily be minus three, minus three, or even, you know, bigger uh, effects. So the minus two, minus two isn't even going to be the regular mode for that card that often. Okay, so opponent is playing first, and I have this kind of a hand. Uh, yeah, it's bad. This is better when you have something that you can use for the ninja. Just playing this as a 2 mana 2 one. Also, Season of Renewal isn't doing much here. This has to be a mulligan. Yeah, this is a lot better. Um, but I have to get rid of a card, and it, it is gonna be that greater channel. Okay, I would only use this mostly like a channel ability, and it's not that exciting. These other cards are much more relevant. And very early in the game as well. They have a one drop, but so do I. This is an artifact, so I can just, you know, exile it with the Kappa Tech Fragger. And <laughs> again, I have two of these. So I can just play the first one. Then I can maybe ninja to the other one uh, with this. They could, of course, have the burn spell that deals three damage, but um, then I get rid of that burn spell. 
the Simeon Sling is just a 1 1 here. No, I'm not too concerned about that. That's an enchantment creature, so will be also something I can get rid of. Uh, with the tech trigger. I could use the lethal exploit, but I just rather, you know. Play my 1-3, which can actually block here, and if they choose to uh, equip the sling, then I can just take two, because this equip cost, or another, no, not an equip cost, it's a reconfigure cost, it's two, so they will have only one mana left over, so I can take the two, sorry, actually three damage if they do that, and then, you know, I can connect with this guy, exile the Ember Keeper. They do have some one mana effect still left because because they have a stop there and they have played already their land. Experimental synthesizer, sure. So they just missed this because they they even I think they should have played this first because if they could have exiled the land and they could have played that instead of the mountain from their hand. All right, so now I have my road captain here. So am I gonna get? Actually, I have a better idea here. A nice trick here, and of course, this cannot attack even. But I will. You will see what I'm doing here. I will explain once it's time. First of all, I put a stop uh, here. Stop after damage. That is going to be relevant here now. And I will connect for uh, one damage here. I will use this ability. Take action, and I will exile the. So this is. Dies, not a leaves the battlefield ability. I will get rid of the Aki Ember Keeper here now. I don't like it around. So this will resolve now. And now we are still in combat. This thing lost the death touch counter, but it is still in combat and this is an unblocked creature even though it also already dealt its damage. So I can ninja chew it out. So this is go goes back to my hand and it can be a fresh thing with a you know death touch counter and this is same thing now. So that is something you should pay attention to when you have these kind of effects available. So I get to reuse now this death touch counter, which will be quite annoying for the opponent to deal with. <laughs> I already got value. I just killed this um, Ember Keeper for free. They can get some value from this, but they would have to exile basically a land or a one mana card if they have a land in hand. They have a patchwork auto madam, but <laughs> yeah, the tech breakers. I can. The thing is that I can just keep doing that with these two ninjas. I mean, if they block it, they, it's just a jump block, and they realized it. <laughs> oh man, that's such a sick thing to do. So, I mean, what what options they have here? They jump block this. Well, then I get to kill a thing for free. If they don't jump block it, I do the same thing. Now this has a ward too, so I wouldn't be exiling that. I would be exiling either the synthesizer or the Simeon Sling here. And you know, do the post post damage <laughs> Kappa Tech Breaker. Now that's not so great for my tempo, but it's just so valuable to get rid of these things for free. And the opponent saw what's gonna happen, so they didn't want to bother with that. Alright, so again I saw something that gets killed by Glowing Torment, so this is definitely going in. Uh, how about the other stuff? The Yukai Train is... Interesting. Uh, I didn't see that much. 4 one yeah this is a, also something i can get rid of with the minus one minus one actually i saw here four creatures uh, this also of course can be only dealt with minus one minus one when it has, doesn't have any counters yet but uh, still four creatures that can be killed with that one mana spell but yep uh, do i want to have a boon of poseidon uh, i think again the thing is that the bearer of, bearer of memory is maybe not as good as the trainee but maybe that centipede too if they are an aggressive deck i don't care about my centipede that much and i'm thinking about the season of a renewal too i think i like no no season of renewal is fine but the historian's wisdom is probably they play black and re, sorry i saw only red cards but they could have burn spells they could have this is four power uh, I'm gonna do on the draw so that I will cut the Historian's Wisdom and play the Boon of Poseidon instead. Seems like an instant speed trick could be interesting here. And that's my sideboarding here, I think. Enchantment count is still at 10, which is good enough for the Generous Visitor here. Um, I think this is the deck.
So it's two games already where I drew both the Kappa Tech Fregers and uh, opponents were really having trouble against them. Of course the first opponent had a lot of enchantments, the second one a lot of artifacts, so it's really... I've been quite lucky in that regard. And this hand is, yep, one drop, two drop. This time I can, you know, do the Calling Stalker with Ninjutsu when I have both this one drop and the two drop here available. Uh, I paused a, a recording because they were waiting quite, they were wasting, well not wasting, but they were using quite a bit of time. But for some reason they chose to, they chose to concede in the mulligan phase. So I don't know what's up with that, but I take the free win. But I think I would have really wanted to play with this hand, even though it's just a two lander with a six drop. I have all the other four cards are all playable with these plants I have available, and I have a very good aggressive start here. So it would have been a maybe a joy to play this game, but that's how it went. Okay, again, I don't have the uh, one drop saga, but uh, I have the trainee into st stalker with the lethal exploit already as a castable spell too. And I'm on the play, so probably I will be able to st stalk around a bit. That is a bit Ona inefficient, uh, but if I get the free counter, I think it's worth it. But they might have a burn spell here, and they do. They don't want to mess up with that guy. But I did draw now my three third land, which is quite good. I can just curve out here. So this says put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. So you can't put two counters on one one thing. Okay, that's something I would want to exile at some point. Um, so am I willing to take the trade here? I think I'm willing to to I um, mean let them block there. There's no reason for me to. Okay, so now I can play the Calling Stalker, but that is quite inefficient use of mana actually. Uh, this would be a three two because if I draw the yeah I, I, I'm better off actually doing the, just casting the lethal exploit, getting rid of the bronze blade pro board before it somehow gets out of hand because it's it's quite annoying when they get at later in the game when they can reconfigure it for five that could be a really really big problem and now they have a heiko yamazaki so i would have preferred <laughs> to i mean i cannot oh man oh that's so horrible they can just cast it for free now man oh and I even re do the modifications. Although these can modify too, but... And this thing... Hmm. Had I known they have an Heiko Yamazaki in their deck, I wouldn't have done the lethal exploit there. Well, now I just have to race. There's no other option. I will play, I will play it here, I will get to draw the card. And uh, hopefully it's a land. And then if they want to you know, block here, then they block, and I would be very happy, but I'm um, pretty sure they're just gonna play the bronze plate boar, but that I can, that's actually gonna cost them three mana, and this will be a 6-4, because I can now play the Yukai Preserver here. Hopefully they don't have some other play here available, if they have a, like a land into another Kami's Flare, that would be just incredibly horrible. But, um, definitely I'm doing this. And hoping they don't have like the one combat trick that gives what first strike and <laughs> and a plus one plus oh if they have that thing i'm totally dead okay now they're at two a six here and i have a six power guy here so now things are a little bit better here actually quite a bit better in fact so it's like company okay i don't have a trample here on any of my guys but I'm also not really in any kind of rush here. Okay, they have a wallet search. Well, now that's a that's an unfortunate thing. Um, the visitor is good though. But they do have the you know they have the Heiko Yamazaki here. 
Am I gonna use the long reach of night instead of the... No, I'm gonna do it like this. So the generous visitor is going to be played here like this. And then I will play this guy. Which will give a one counter to this thing. And I think it has to just simply give the other guy to itself. And now the question is, am I going to attack with the preserver here? Because they might again get to value out of the Heiko Yamazaki if they kill the 4-4 I have in here. If they double block with 3-2 and 1-1, one, one, I think it's it's fairly okay. And if I get to trade with the Heiko Yamazaki, that's totally fine too. I think I will pressure them now a bit. Don't think it's gonna get much better than that. But yeah, the, this game is really revolving around the Heiko Yamazaki and I'm happy to make this make this happen now. So this is now allowing me a bit more time here. They also have, so this says, number of creature cards in defending place graveyard. Currently it is one and two. That will be more. This is also a creature card also when it's in the graveyard. They got a ogre head helm. Yeah, I need my <laughs> artifact hate, the one of the kappa tech figures. No, maybe not soon because this is, you know, saying that this card your hand, but um. Okay, so how do I do this? If I attack with the preserve, I, I couldn't. I can make this into a five-five. But uh, okay, that's actually important because they now, as it is, they can attack with this, so that they can block with the one-one and the three-two. If I make it into a five-five, they have to, you know, jump block with the one-one or basically trade both the boar and the ogre here or the other this here plus they have to discard a card or um yeah anyway i'll do this they, they choose what they do with that thing that's a five five don't think they want to sacrifice the one but i think they're just gonna discard a card in here this says combat damage to a player all right, I might just play the Coiling Stalker post combat. I don't think I'm gonna need you to it out. It can block these you know, two toughness creatures, fair and square. Okay, they chose to actually sacrifice a creature instead. Does that mean that they are going to double block here? I'm totally fine with a double block here. They can just go to one. That's also possible. But um. Whatever they do, I'm fine with that. Double block. I'm a bit concerned that they have something amazing coming up. I'm really concerned. So, Stalker. I don't think this is gonna connect, so let's just play the Stalker here as a 2-1. Um, I mean, this is gonna be a big menace creature. Well, it's not a big creature un unless it's attacks, but that's all I care about here now. I'm at 17 myself. They gain a life. So they play the land before cracking the synthesizer, which means that they they are not gonna plan to do that. Otherwise, they could you know exile a land and exile a land and you know they could have played that instead of this thing. And now this is the arena bug here. If they don't have a creature to sacrifice, they have to discard. I don't want it to do that, but of course I, I needed to play this card when I when I played it. And now they do have the yeah they do have a creature, so they have a, another one too. So this is actually. Yeah, they can do the... I'm not sure that sequencing was how they wanted to do, because if they sacrifice another synthesizer... Okay, they... Alright, well... Don't know about anything anymore. <laughs> and they could have maybe used the anvil with the synthesizer somehow. Okay, so Fang of Shigeki here is of course just uh, going to... Give me a... Counter on the Generous Visitor, so I can attack with them both. I don't care if they trade. Because they are not gonna get the 1-1 one, one token other than, you know, on their own turn. They are not gonna get the 1-1. One, one. The only called Anvil only works on their own turn. So they should have used the ability on their turn if they wanted to get some value out of that. Twinshot Sniper is impressive. But, um... So is my... I guess if they do have a removal on this... A uh, very big menace creature I'm going uh, about to have. Then they have a good chance. If they don't, well, I, I guess they just lose to that card. 
Now double blocking your four toughness creature is not the most, uh, you know, toughest thing to do in the world. So they have six creature cards, so it's lethal attacker currently. So they have to take this one now. Because they have a plan of making the experimental synthesizer a thing. I mean, I mean to a samurai token and then they can double block the animus of, of knight's reach. Or they just have a removal spell on it, which is totally possible, of course. It seems like they are cracking the synthesizer now. Or maybe not. Oh, they, they cracked it that way, but they needed a 2-2 there. I mean, yeah, they can... When they need more than 3 power, they can double block it with 3 power currently. They get a token number. So this says, return a creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to your hand. They don't have a legendary creature, so it will cost 4 mana for the channel. Uh, no, and, no, no, this is not. This is ex in exile. They they should have played it as a land. They can't use the channel from exile. Okay, I get to. I guess I could have played the swamp in anticipation of something like that, but. Uh, okay, so they had actually <laughs> all the creatures. Wow. So now they are not in trouble. Hmm. I'm sad now. I'm not so sad anymore. <laughs> Alright, I'm not so sad at all. This is an instant even. So I can have some tricks happen. Wow. With the Yukai Preserver here. How do I actually want to do? Um, I have six mana here. This is, I can return an enchantment and a creature card. Can attack. Yeah, I'll... I'll... I'll attack with both, because if they block this with only... Well, they can block it with 5 power and then... Well, I, I don't know, let's see. This is at least interesting to attack with both. Let's let's make the opponent have the hard decision here. That was a really good top deck. That was an amazing top deck. Not going to lie there. Uh, this is um, if they are gonna do, not block with the virus beetle. This is the most horrible thing that could happen to them because I can put both of a uh, plus one plus one counter on both of these guys, and now they neither of them will die. So this is just game over now. Uh, that's not exactly true. This will get a no. It won't get because the uh, iron will does not happen on their turn. Yep. So this is now sickness. So I'm gonna get the Yukai Preserver as an enchantment and then as a creature it's gonna be... Oh, actually, sorry, that was... I think I'm still get, going to get the... I mean, I, I, I chose a creature there, but uh, I don't think I want to have the Coiling Stalker or the Generous Visitor here or the Yukai Trainee, so I'll just... Um, I, mean, I guess I'll just have these Preservers here. They are, they are what I need here. I think I need only the one preserver now because this is this is totally sick now that they made the blocks the way they did. <laughs> I don't even lose the fang here. Yeah, they can drain one life, but they don't get the one one token. Um, they really should use this on their turn to actually get those one one tokens. Now they need some amazing top deck here. This is now a nine power or well, ten power. Okay, that's it. They drew a land. Alright, alright. So, um, I won without uh, drawing these tech fraggers, and this would have been a really good draw, so I, I do like my chances now. They have a lot of artifacts. A vaulted search. Uh, the Heiko Yamazaki, that is, that is something I need to deal with. Uh, Twin Shot Sniper is great. Their, their deck seems pretty darn good, actually. It's mostly red. But maybe they just drew a lot of red cards, not, not black cards. Um, so yeah, Heiko Yamazaki. How about the Cloving Torment? Did I see one toughness creatures? I mean, the ones that are worth using a card on, like Virus Beetle is not something I want to kill with a card. There's one Unstoppable Ogre. That's it. Killing the Companion isn't that valuable either. So probably not going to play this clothing torment but against the burn based removal I do want to have the boon of Poseidon here almost want to have the favor of Yukai too 
Does that make sense? Well, let's see the cards first. The Fang of Shigeki is gonna be not very good against the the Oni Cult Anvil or the uh, the Beetle that makes me discard. Yeah, I, I will cut that one. And then uh, anything else that I want to be cutting here? The Centipede could be cut actually, because I do like the idea of having this. Also, this this um favor of Yukai against their burn based removal. Uh, who knows? Sometimes I might even play the plus three plus three or although that's quite unlikely, I would say. Um, another Yukai train is a possibility, but not exactly sure I need it here. No, I will maybe do it like this. Okay, this is amazing. I won't even play, be playing the Reconnect Red. Usually this is what you want to play on turn one, but because I do have the Generous Visitor here, it's not gonna be, I'm not gonna waste the enchantment cast to trigger there. Uh, don't think though I'm... Okay, Song Shaper. Uh, well, no, I'm not attacking with now. I could have attacked and used the Calling Stalker otherwise. But now I will just uh, play a trainer here. And next turn I can play the Raid here, give a counter on the... Well, let's see what they do. So it's like Companion. Yeah, I'm not too concerned. They probably just erase me, which is totally fine. I'm willing to take the three here. And um, so Coiling Stalker, do I plan to do this on, on this turn? I'm not totally sure if I should do that. There's also the possibility to just play it as a 2-1 to block the Tawasi Song Shaper, and I actually like that idea. It can you know, be a 3 or 4 power creature easily. Yes, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna attack with this thing only. I know I could have played the... Oh, yeah, I should have played... <laughs> Man. Maybe now it's a change of plans now because I suddenly realized I made a mistake. Not sure if it's worth it. I might be still maybe not. Uh, because I, I think I should have played the kind of raid pre combat give the Yukai Trainee a counter here. But I might also give a counter on the Generous Visitor here. I could attack with this, make this into a 3 2, return this to my hand, then play the Recon Raid, make this into a 2 2 to at least prevent them from attacking with the 1 1. Next turn I can play the Yukai Trainee and the Lethal Exploit. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I'm not totally sure. But the one thing that is good about this line of play is that at least this Coding Stalker will get a counter now, which would have been a bit awkward card against the 1-1 one, one ground guy otherwise. Yeah, this is fine. And I can make the Visitor into a 2-2, two, two, so I of course do have the option to now block the Song Saber even, but mostly with the Harmonious Emergence in my hand and Quite a few enchantment draws I could be having here. I don't really feel like trading here. Opponent dealing me 3, 4 or something like that damage shouldn't be too too horrible. Especially because they do want to have a blocker on the curling stalker. And if they attack with most of their stuff I can kill. This actually is a minus 4, minus 4 currently. <laughs> um, I can kill a bigger blocker, maybe force them to jump block with the one bar or something like that. I of course do hope they don't have any of those black ninjas because they of course can ninja the I used ninja to with the searchlight companion here. Okay, they do that. Let's see if they now finally realize to use the only cult anvil on their own turn. Automated artificer, sure. Taking five. Uh, next turn I'm not playing the Harmonious Emergence, so actually 
I kind of feel like I want to just... Uh... No, if I block the Song Shaper, they can... They will get a 1-1 one -one token. That's not nice. That is not nice. I'll take 5. I'll take 5 here. Now they have to at least... Yeah, because if I would block here a trade, they would get a 1-1 one -one here from the Onical Anvil. And then they could triple, triple block the Stalker here. But what I can now do with the Stalker is that they will double block it and I will kill the Automated Artificer with the Lethal Exploit. Or, I mean, it doesn't matter which one I kill. And then they will lose these guys. And they will be down to 1-1 one -one and a 2-2. Two -two. And uh, I can play the Yukai Trainee. Yeah, and now, why would they... Oh, because this is not an artifact. I just didn't realize it. It's a spirit. All right. Um, don't think I will have to play this pre-combat because this doesn't give counters to either of these because they don't have. I mean, they don't already have a plus one plus one counter. So let's do this now. And I'm totally expecting them to double block, which is why I'm gonna attack with both of my guys. And I think I will use the lethal exploit. To save save the whichever is gonna get double blocked here, and it's it's gonna be the calling stalker for sure, isn't it? Next turn I can actually play the harmonious emergence because I have the fifth in, in a way that it gives me the four five un untapped. That's great. Now I had the option to just, you know, do the trade there and then use the removal spell on the Tovasi Song Shaper. But I'm gonna just maybe, you know, trade the Song Shaper with the Yukai Trainee. I will get this 2-2 two, two guy. So that's, that's one, you know, target for the plus one plus one counter. Also this will be a legit target for a plus one plus one counter. So I do, do think... And this is this emergence will also give me a plus one plus one counter with the generous visitor. Yeah, I wish I had a little bit more of these enchantment payoffs, but I don't know if there are that many really good ones. If you would be green white, then there are more options for that. Yeah, let's do this. They will get the one man token because this trade, you know. But of course, the only cult and anvil it has to do something good for them. They sacrificed that before. Wait a second. I mean, yeah, they, I understand. They had to make this, of course, into three power creature. Uh, but them sacking the one one flyer, I don't. That's really not really a big deal. That was totally fine for me. They chose to play this as a land instead of. A, okay, well, I have. A, I have a thing I can discard. Now I need to draw a land for in order to make this able to attack, but. If I draw a spell, that's not bad either. Okay, that's a good spell to draw. Uh, so they have to... Um, I mean, this seems pretty easy. I will force them to... Because I can make this guy into a 4-4 this turn. The other option is to... Allow them to make the triple block, which I wouldn't actually mind that much. Because I can play the preserver and the, this trigger will give a counter on the stalker and then I can put the ETB uh, counter also on the stalker, making it 5-4 so that they can't, you know, but then they can just start jump blocking it. I don't like that. Um, I like the approach more with, which involves me playing the harmonious emergence this turn. On the swamp. Get the one counter on here. And now they have to either jump block it or trade all three things there. And I still have the value from this Yukai Preserver coming up later on. And the reason I played the tap thing because I, I don't care about being able to block with this thing. And now I have I can put the counter on the Nezumi Road Captain anyway. Yeah, that is totally fine if they choose to do that. Yep, I, mean, I, I don't have a sword, it's on good stuff here. So they have one card in hand, now of course two, but uh, this has to be something pretty good and that's not really... That's gonna be a 
but it's an extra card. They get a mountain and then they get to have a 2-2 two -two samurai. They can also sacrifice it for a 1-1 one -one token and now they can play anything that costs up to 5 mana. And they have a papercraft decoy, not really something I'm concerned about. Okay, so now... Yeah, they can draw a card from the decoy. I drew a land, but it's a tapped land, so... I guess I don't mind if they double block this thing and then... They can double block that and... Uh, yeah, but that's fine. I'm attacking with these guys. Post combat I can play this. Because the, this thing has Vigilance. This is a many, so they have to actually double block if they want to do that. Now they can just take 6, they are at 19. Either way, it doesn't matter. I, I, will, I know what I'm gonna do here. If they take 6, I will just uh, play this and give a counter on the road captain with the... Well, now that's not the case, so... They can, you know, cast this in for a card. But at, le at least their board is empty right now and I get more threats in here. So this is going to be... I'm gonna give a counter to who? Maybe even the visitor itself. Or do I wanna have... I guess I'm like it a 3-3. Just ma make all my th guys you no know, threats here. 4, 4, 4, 5 and a 3, 3 here. They, they need something quite big here. Okay, another anvil isn't the one that is going to save them from this situation. They get some tokens, but um, yeah, that's, that's not really going to help. Oh, sickness. Am I gonna ninja to the preserver to get rid of the anvil? I'm not even sure if I care about it, and the, I would be dealing seven damage in that case. But getting rid of the anvil could be interesting. Can play this on the next turn. Ah, uh, it's actually tough. Dealing 7 is quite nice though. Oh man. Yeah, this is not easy. I'm not gonna return the visitor because I want to keep it as a 3-3. Three, three. This, this loses one counter, but it you know, grants one counter when I play it again. So I could need you to the preserver to get rid of the anvil. And they have less ways to make jump blockers. Fine, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm not sure this is, but they have so much life that I'm not. I'm them going to ten might not matter that much. I also do have three mana up, so let's say they have, they, let's say they get some kind of um, you know, the discard effect. I can still channel this for three mana. I'll give two counters to my guys. And also this will trigger the Generous Visitor, so I can make the Tech, tech Fragger, in fact, still a 2-4, which is, you know, a little bit more sizable thing than the... And then just a 1-3 there. Okay, so they have a... They have now... Oh, they did... What did they do here? They... It's as if they were going to reconfigure, but they somehow didn't do that. How oh, they can even use mana for that? Did they target itself somehow? Um, because they used the mana for something. It was, but I mean, if this was a 4-3, it wouldn't matter really at all. It wouldn't really matter. Okay, there's an Assassin's Ink too. So, what's the most reasonable thing to do here? They have four power of... Hmm... I know what's most reasonable. It's this. Well, I don't know if this is necessarily the most reasonable thing. I, but I'm gonna make this into a 3-5. And I'm gonna attack for 7. Without giving them the option to, you know... There won't be no option to... Double block it. Yeah, they will have to take 7 down to 6 or start jump blocking. 
And yeah, if this was a 4-3, that wouldn't be any better for them. Now I can attack with the Generous Visitor, trade with the Bronze Blade board. I actually quite like that idea now. It has given me enough value. If, if its final deed is to trade with the Bronze Blade board, giving me the, letting me still have the Assassin's Ink in my hand, I think that is just uh, what I should be doing here. And even if this was a 4-3, they could still, you know, actually it's maybe even better that they, you know, have two different creatures than than that they had one on 4-3 here only. Yeah, they, I guess they have the option to take 10 damage, but uh, then all of my guys will be lethal and they have only two blockers to my four attackers. But this is not really, I mean, I guess this uh, trading with the visitor is the, giving them the best chance. Maybe if they have some kind of mass removal effect in, in the deck. Um, maybe that can help them, but this is now 10 damage versus 10 life. They need at least a blocker or, or a removal spell. And the blocker will be killed by the Assassin's Ink because I have the mana to cast it. So I guess this could be it. I had this um, a little while ago. Uh, three consecutive drafts with, with pretty bad results, but then my previous draft was amazing. And now this seems to be... Okay, this is now a 3-0 result too. Okay, they just tap all the mana and... Uh, was this the same thing they did on the previous? I don't know what was up with that. Can you try to target a reconfigure action? Can, a, can an equip ability target itself? Well, not an equip ability, but a reconfigure action. I'm not sure. Anyway, I do like the deck and I don't think it's um, that big of a surprise that I happened to get all the uh, three, three match wins here. Uh, of course, the second round opponent, they didn't take concede after game one but my starting hand was pretty good there so I, I think i had a good chance in the game game two there if we played it out um, but yeah this is really i mean if it wasn't clear at this point the kappa take fracker is really good even against opponents that don't have that many good targets for this thing it is a two mana one three death that's that's a really good stat line and um well i never got to play this i did sideboard it out a couple of times i think i played this one like once Season of Renewal seems a pretty good card when you... Because it's just a little bit of a flood, pro, a flood protection. Because of course you can flood out and if you don't have any ways to gain cards. And in this deck it was the Season of Renewal and the Gloom Streaker that can help me against the flooding out a bit. Definitely nice. And uh, yeah, Visitor of course very good with 11 enchantments main deck. And uh, yeah, that, that was just a nice deck. I'm happy with it. I had some successful drafts now after the few uh, bad ones. So let's claim the prize here and the next one next one will actually be a draft number 10. It will be a premier draft and after that draft I will show my first set completion update uh, from Neon Dynasty. Now it's a little bit different from usual because I did get the Decathlon finals, you know, the best result in one of the finals entries. So that means that by default I already have one of each card of each rarity in the Neon Dynasty. So the set completion will be a, uh, quite a bit easier now for this set, but uh, uh, I will still uh, report, you know, kind of uh, record this, uh, the pro process and uh, so with every 10 drafts. Uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and bye bye.